Hey everyone, today we're going to check out the latest bundle. This is from Boss Digital. Uh, these are all effects plugins. Um, so if you know anything about these, you know, you kind of can just skip this video, but this is just showing how to use the different plugins here. We have a limiter, we have a transient shaper, we have a gate, and then a kick. Uh, kind of, it's called the Sasquatch Kick Machine, and it really can change the shape um, and sound of your kick drum. So let's check it out real quick. Right now, we're just going to start simple with the wall, which is a limiter. What does a limiter do? Well, of course, it limits the master output so that we prevent uh, what we call clipping or any distortion or anything like that. I'm just going to pop out my mixer. With everything off, we're going to get clipping pretty quickly. And then, of course, we can just turn this on, eliminate that completely. The signal hits a wall and just stops so you don't get all that clipping. Now, right there, if you noticed right here and right down here, uh, that red signal means we have clipped uh, the total volume, the gain staging, all the volume of the output of the tracks is too much, and it's going to cause a little bit of distortion when we export that track. It's going to cause your headphones to you know, sound like crap and distorted, and usually happens with those lower frequencies and when you kind of stack all these things together. So an easy way around that and I use a limiter on every single one of my tracks. So of course, just turn this on. It'll preserve the quality and the overall perceived loudness of your track, and it will simply stop it from clipping and keep it distortion-free and a nice pristine audio signal. Now, you know, played the same thing over and we didn't get that red uh, emergency clipping light showing up down here. Um, so again, solves that problem pretty quickly. And, you know, there are some other functions of it as well. As I was playing, you could hear there was a, you know, really big bass sound. And you could see right up here as that um, it was bringing the volume down of that. Uh, specifically, you could tell when it's happening and I could hear it was because of the bass line. There's, it, that one's a little bit too loud. And it just brought down the volume of the entire track since it's on the master. And But it preserved the overall quality of that track. Obviously, I'm going to want to go in and turn that bass down. But just as a quick kind of fix, that's how a limiter works. And of course, if as I was uh, tweaking the knobs here is the threshold and the ceiling. Um, you can get more of a, you know, a compressed sound, uh, which if that's what you're going for, but you can also just do a very pristine, clean sound, um, which doesn't color the sound, it doesn't overly process it or anything, and it just makes it listenable for those of us on headphones or on speakers. When you export this, it won't clip. So let's go on to the next one. I guess we'll go to the uh, Sasquatch kick machine. This one's pretty cool. Let me find a loop right here with just my kick drum, and I've turned it on here. On the kick drum, we'll, we'll play it real quick. This is without any effects. And now we'll turn on the Sasquatch kick machine, which allows us to really shape the sound of that actual kick. Um, so if you don't have a lot of kick samples and you're kind of tired of using the same ones, maybe if you have FL Studio and you've used all like the stock uh, ones, this is a great tool. So I'm going to show you how it works real quick and then exact same kick sound. Uh, we'll start with it off, play it real quick, and then I'm going to turn it on and you'll see as we um, mess with the different knobs what actually happens.
So obviously it's, you know, kind of fairly boring to demo. If you have, you know, speakers or you're listening on your phone to this video, you're not going to notice as much of a difference except the click. Um, if you have headphones on, you're really going to hear it uh, come to life as I just this oomph. It really adds that low end, that kind of, um, you know, the really sub level of it but it's it's pitched it's not just a thud so the oomph adds a nice you know resonance to the sub the click of course is how just the attack of the overall click of the overall kick and then the dry knob you can hear when i turn it all the way down it's it there's barely any bass to it it sounds like there is a filter on it almost and it's just pretty much all click um so we also have some different um presets here if you want uh if you load it up and you just want to get started see what it can do just load up a preset and we'll check some of those out real quick So again, really useful tool, uh, not just for electronic, but even for you know composers like myself. You really want to add a lot of that boomy bass to it, and you don't want it as th you know just that kind of deep thud. Uh, you can really add a lot of resonance with that oomph knob, which is my favorite part about it. But as you can hear in the presets, we get a lot of variety there as well. Some of those were kind of overdriven and distorted. Now let's go to the uh, transient shaper. This is a tool which adjusts the attack on the sample, so it's it's best mostly used for drums. So we start with a drum loop here. Again, gonna start with it off and then turn it on. You'll hear how it really makes the drums either sound a bit further away because it, it shapes those transients, which is mostly like the attack of the actual samples. It can make them very clicky, very punchy, or make them a bit more roomy sounding by reducing the attacks or the transients on that. So let's uh, check it out real quick. So that you can really hear the extremes of this. So if we just keep it flat, as I increase the transients here, you can really hear just the overall um, sound of what turning on this effect does. And it starts from sounding, you know, kind of a normal drum kit to very clicky and very kind of up close and in your face. Now you hear we have the sustain turned down. It's pretty much just attack, and it sounds kind of weird. But also, if you as you saw, I was going into the EQ there, and you can EQ certain frequencies that you want affected. It's a very very useful tool. It takes those different parts of the sound, and you can make it all attack. You can make it all sustain, and really shape the overall sound. Anyway, um, finally we'll go to the gate, which is kind of the opposite of a compressor. Um, a gate's very useful if you play guitar and you've got a lot of, say, uh, feedback or just a buzz it from, you know, actually plugging your guitar into the interface. Or, for instance, I used it here on a synth which has a very long tail. And all it does is eliminate that tail. 
you know, if, if it's got a lot of resonance in it, and when it goes down below a certain threshold level, it's going to cut off and not ring out as much. So we'll check it out here on this synth. So the first example was kind of extreme. You could hear exactly where it cut off, um, but you can attack. Uh, excuse me. You can adjust the attack and the release and everything of that. But on the second example, where I changed it to a preset called snare softener, you could hear as I adjusted the threshold. It didn't completely cut out the sound. It made it a lot less audible on those long resonating tails for the synth. Again, this is going to be useful for vocals or guitars and stuff like that. So that's a quick rundown of how all these plugins work, um, how you know simple the interfaces are, uh, the kind of ridiculous name of, of Gatey Weighty. Anyway, that's, that's the company and that's the bundle. Uh, a lot of fun, very useful tools. So that's Boz Digital. Um, and thanks for checking this one out with me. Remember to subscribe, stay tuned for more, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.